Dear Mr. Sims, we here at Dead Tree Studios enjoy the content that you are creating and would like to propose a collaboration in exchange. Okay, okay. Enclosed is our pen and paper game master's guide. We would like if you could possibly have one of your VAs read a little bit of it. Sure. Okay. Um, I, I'll go see if Forrest is busy. Salutations, New Overmare. If you are reading this, then the stable you call home is functioning correctly and it is protecting you from the dangers of the wasteland. The name our research team has taken to calling the regions impacted by redaction. This means you are in one of redaction percent of the stables with fully functioning doors. You are receiving this package and notice because you have been chosen as the Overmare of Stable 112. Congratulations on your promotion to Overmare of Stable 112. Contained inside this package is your copy of the StableTech StableTop System Manual and Guide to the Operation of the StableTop Entanglement Shear Control Podium. Please do not lose or damage your manual. As well, please do not eat your manual, as the pages have been soaked in a solution making them mildly toxic and tasting strongly of kiwi. Before we get started, there are a few things we must cover. Being the Overmare of Stable 112, your main duty is to be a Stable Master, or SM for short. BBS, this is just the official title. The other ponies who run and propagate tabletop problem-solving sessions all refer to each other as Game Masters, or GMs. Something about not being Overmare and not feeling like deserving of Stable Master cred. And oversee the operations of numerous and varied tabletop games through this fine stable. This manual will be integral to your duties as the head stable master of Stable 112. This guide is intended to ease some of the burden of operating the stable top entanglement shear control podium. In the unlikely event that the stable tech stable top entanglement shear control podium is inaccessible, this system has been designed to utilize your brain for all the procedural content generation. While operating in this mode, be sure to utilize the reference section of the first volume in order to avoid redaction and brain overheating, each of which can prove fatal. An SM is, in many respects, much like a standard Overmare, with the exception that they oversee a game within a world of their own creation, instead of just the day-to-day -day minuta of basic stable life and operation. SM's guide player characters, or PCs, through adventures of every and any sort. In addition, it will fall to you to govern this new land of thought and memory, arbitrate its physical laws, and enforce the rules of its arcano science. You will wear many hats throughout this journey, but over time, you will master the skills needed, and StableTech has the utmost faith in you. With that settled, let us move on to your new duties and obligations as Stable Master. Good luck, Overmare. Curly Cabbage, Chief Officer of Fringe Arcano Science, 1 Stable Tech Offices Lane, Canterlot, Equestria. Job Description As an SM, your job is, first and foremost, that of a storyteller. While there are other facets of stable life to run, those are not your primary task. The world you weave and the story you tell is driven by the wills and the actions of the PCs. Therefore, one of your duties is to tell an engaging story and to make the world feel alive and organic. In order to do this, you first need to make the world and non-player characters, NPCs, convincing. For example, a greedy NPC will always prefer to talk about money, preferably their money, and avoid topics like charity or reward in conversations. While not impossible to get this NPC to part ways with their caps, it's at least a hard check. Judge the conversation through the mindset of the NPC to react appropriately to a player and what they are saying. As well, don't forget that the PCs and the NPCs would be able to see one another. First impressions matter. And if you meet the mayor of a town covered in blood and pony gore, they are almost certainly going to be slow to warm up to you. Conversely, Walking into town in black tie finest with a sack of caps is an easy way to make some fast friends. Hope you brought enough caps to share with everyone. This same principle of interaction should govern your living world. 
By this, a PC would expect a machine or spell that does a certain thing to always do the same thing, such as a toaster making delicious toast. If a certain item suddenly does something wildly different, such as said toaster trying to shake players down for caps and lose slices of bread, players will be a hard sell to convince to use it. As well, should something like the above scenario arise, be mindful that some PCs might even attempt to destroy the object in question. These are all things to bear in mind, should you make the decision to add in sentient, down-on-their-luck appliances with a tendency for violence. That being said, it is not necessary to define every little detail in a game world. However, it helps to have a general thought or idea for a world and its NPCs to make them feel more alive. For instance, it is worth mentioning that the local weaponsmith has various trinkets and framed documents that seem to trace back to pre-war Equestria. It is considered an extraneous amount of detail to, when PCs first interact with them, mention the various documents on the walls recounting the deeds of bravery and service of their ancestors and how they served for generations in the Royal Guard, and other such bits of information. While this might come in handy, should they become part of or relevant to a quest, that much information for every NPC is not only going to bog down the game session, but your players aren't likely to care after the third backstory. If you insist on a backstory, feel free to use it as a justification for the actions an NPC can take. The second job of the SM is to be a fair judge. You have to decide what happens when a player decides to act and have the world react accordingly. After all, as the famous falling apple once deduced, for every action there is an equal and opposite reaction. It is your call if a skill or special is to be rolled or not at all. For this, take the character's abilities and circumstances into account to decide what bonuses or penalties to give. If a character kicks down a door, it's advised to make them roll their strength as opposed to when attacking an animal with their bare appendages and making unarmed more fitting to roll. For an example penalty, the door may be reinforced on the other side, or even barred. The PC might have an injury, but not crippled, limb, which makes a proper kick absurdly difficult. For an example bonus, have the door be old and or rotting away or allow strength plus or multiplied, or times, some value should the player choose to have their characters buck. There are similar bonuses to be had for skill checks, such as the amount of light affecting sneaking ability, or a PC's physical build when trying to negotiate or intimidate someone. Lastly, not every check needs a bonus or a penalty, and PCs should be encouraged to roll on a flat number, regardless of how much they whine. Taking a character's allegiances and backstories into account can provide fantastic grounds for narrative outcomes favoring the party, as well as rewarding the player for the time they invested into their character. If, for example, a follower of Faust strikes down an innocent pony on grounds of straw pony arguments, you should consider lowering their reputation with their faction, or even their friends. As well, a small karma penalty shouldn't be out of the question, depending on context. Your third job is to decide, implement, and execute. Passing or failing roles can create either heroic, horrific, or humorous situations. Say one of your PC goes and successfully kicks in the door from before. Well, unknown to your party, inside there was a large, mutated creature of the apocalypse that you, in your zeal, disturbed it from its routine. It does not look happy. It rushes you and now your party has most likely found themselves in an unprepared combat scenario. Another outcome is that the inside belonged to the house of an avid doll collector, and while she did not survive the war, her dolls did. The house appears untouched and full of loot, but you cannot shake the sensation that you have made a terrible decision in coming inside and should make a plan to leave. Now, for a humorous outcome, feel free to plant materials or items that will make players laugh as a result. As humor is a varied and complex topic, Stable Tech advises you get to know your players before attempting to set up elaborate gags. However, don't be afraid to listen to commentary. If a player has an idea for a funny situation or outcome, you could allow a bonus check to make it happen. Stay rational.
This is your fourth and likely the most important and difficult duty as SM, unless clearly stated from either the beginning of the game, also known as Session Zero, see page number 000 for more information, or the beginning of the session, you should not be actively trying to kill the party. As a rule, any challenge encountered by the PCs should have the threat of death and a high risk of harm, but it should not be an unscalable cliff or an unkillable beast, so to speak. Let the dice fall where they may. Even failure can provide chances to succeed. But try and avoid putting the character's well-being all on the dice equivalent of 16 red. Dice are capricious, and will drop nothing but a slew of critical successes, critical fails, or lukewarm success at a whim. Instead, allow a crafty and clever player a chance to tweak the odds in their favor. Reward clever thinking and roleplay with positive outcomes, and punish reckless players with negative outcomes. Life is cheap, and bullets are no pony's friend, regardless of what they might do in-game or how badly your plans for the day got destroyed. It is never supposed to be the SM versus the PCs. PCs do a fine job of getting themselves wounded and killed without divine intervention, or karmic smiting as the case may be. Overmare, do you know who wins in a fight when the stable master and the player characters argue and bicker about rules and mechanics? Other non-stabletop systems, that's who. You're a red-blooded equestrian. We at Stabletech have put our trust that you won't let sedition like that grace the eyes of the poor stable dwellers. Do not let us down, Overmare. Do not let others try and undermine everyone's fun. If one person is not enjoying the game, it is likely that others stopped enjoying the game but said nothing. This is a problem that needs to be addressed quickly preferably when the matter is voiced or after the session wraps up for the day. If brought to your attention, it is imperative that you do not rest your hooves on the issue. As well, if one player states they are against something as a player, respect that. Protesting that an action or event going on because it's against the nature of their characters to even be around is one thing. If something in the story begins to affect the player outside of game, not only does this ruin their fun and immersion, you will be found in violation of your job and a new overseer will be appointed to take your place. While the goal of the game is for everyone to have fun, you must keep in mind that you are still the SM, and this is still your world. Everything comes down to your final say, be it an outcome or a dice roll, the interpretation of a rule or mechanic, or even the omission of rules and creation of your own rules and mechanics, aka homebrews. While the Fallout Equestria PNP, stabletop role-playing game, has been formulated in a manner to give SM's flexibility within the established rule set of the game, we recognize that some SM's will want to do things differently or add their own spin that would otherwise not be included in the core rule set. That is why we have included a section of lined paper for SMs and players to make their own notes and additions to the game, and to cut down on the amount of floating paper.